are in the last days, the writing's on the wall. Signs and wonders abound in the skies, and the enemy, he keeps pouring out his lies. He would tell you, don't worry, you have plenty of time. No need to get ready, drink and be merry. But the day of reckoning is coming to this earth. The judgment of God is about to be birthed. And the enemy, he keeps pouring out his lies. There's a new age upon us, are you sure you're prepared? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have you believed in your heart? Are you born again? Many will say, yes, I am. But some will profess the Lord's holy name, yet possess him not in their hearts. These will not see heaven with us, for he must be your all, not just part. And the enemy, he keeps pouring out his lies. So we must prepare with full armor and sword, not merely professing his name. Possess in your heart the truth of his word, for the enemy he keeps pouring out his lies. The Lord will soon return for those pure in heart who have finished the race and will take their part in the snatching away. To meet him in the air, free from all sin and all earthly cares. Still the enemy, he keeps pouring out his lies. Well, doomsday is coming, but not for his saints. He'll take those that are his and leave those who ain't. The choice is yours, will you go or will you stay? Choose wisely now, and you will hear him say, Well done, faithful one, well done, well done, faithful one, well done, and the enemy will keep pouring out his lies and the faithful will keep looking to the eastern skies welcome 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 so glad to see you all tonight to we are in the last days end times bible prophecy study and i'm pastor david french and next to me is ken whitcomb and we are mm. so glad that you are Christ. here tonight we hope Amen. you and your family are doing well and we believe we have a very exciting bible study for you tonight but before we get into that let's open with a word of prayer lord we thank you tonight for giving us another wednesday night that we can come together to study your wonderful word and to know that you have given us insight and understanding to the days we are living in. So we ask tonight by the power of your spirit that you would lead and guide us and teach us tonight so that we would be encouraged in these dark days we are living in. Yes. We ask this in the name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Before we go any further tonight, if you live near the Ocala, Florida area, we'd love to have you come check us out. If you're looking for a remnant church, that is. We are at 10345 Southwest 27th Avenue, Ocala, Florida, 34476. Or look us up online if you want to check us out that way at www.abundantlifefellowshipocala.com. You will find us on YouTube at ALF Ministries Ocala. And you will also find us on Rumble at Abundant Life Fellowship Church. Our videos are on there. And if you would, please... We ask that you would subscribe and share the videos with others as you please. Also, if you have any questions about tonight's Bible study and you're watching this uh, later, please email us. We'd love to hear from you. Please email us at we are in the last days Bible study at gmail.com. Well, tonight we are studying, uh, starting a brand new study. We've Amen. done this one before, 
but we've, uh, we kind of updated it and added to it. It's been a while since we did this one. We are living in the days of Noah. This is part one called a corrupted world. And I believe tonight you will agree we live in a corrupted world. Jesus, when he was preparing his disciples for his departure, you remember when he came into Jerusalem, he uh, wept Mm -hmm. over Jerusalem because he knew what was in store for the Jewish people because they rejected him as their Messiah. And he shared with his disciples that, uh, you know what, all these things, the temple and all the buildings of the temple are going to be destroyed. And they came to him and it was Peter, Andrew, James, and John one day and they said, Lord, tell us, when is this going to happen? And what will be the signs of your coming at the end of the age? And of course, you'll find this is the Olivet Discourse of our Lord found in Matthew chapter 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. And Jesus told them, he said, don't let anyone deceive you, you know, because many are going to come, false prophets and false teachers and false Christ. He told them of the birth pang signs, wars and rumors of wars, pestilences, earthquakes, and famines. But the thing that he told them that I believe helped him understand more than anything, he said to his disciples that there is coming a day that you should know very well a lot about, and that is the days of Noah. Now, when Jesus told them about the days of Noah, yeah. he knew they would not see those days mm-hmm. because they passed many years ago, but he knew we would see those days, Uh see, because Jesus is God, he knew when we would be born, and that we are seeing the days of Noah, and the days of Lot tonight, you remember Jesus told his disciples, remember they're out on the Mount of Olives, the last time after his uh, ascension, his resurrection, right before his ascension, Mm -hmm. remember what happened, the disciples came, what did they say to him, remember, Lord, when is the, uh, when did, when did when he goes, when is the promise of your coming? Yeah, yeah but I, yeah. in Acts, Acts chapter 1, they, they said, Lord, yeah. when will you restore the kingdom, the to, kingdom Israel. to Israel? Yeah. Are you going to do it now? Yeah, it's not, to, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons, Yeah, but that's in the Lord's will. But in other words, they're to occupy until he comes back. Yes, and that's yeah. what we that's need what to be doing, too. Occupy. We're not occupying. Occupy he, he knew they would not see the days right. of Noah, but... We certainly are. So this is what we're going to look at tonight. Now, we've had a new feature. So those of you who maybe are watching at home or watching this uh, at a later time, we also want to give you the scriptures that we are using tonight. So we're going to start off by turning in your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, and we hope you brought them with you. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24. And we're going to look at verses 37 through 39. And here Jesus is completing his Oliva Discourse and he's telling his disciples after already talking about the birth pangs and then he talks about, hey, there's coming a time where this guy known as the abomination of desolation is coming. You know who he is, right? The Antichrist. Yeah. And he told them, when you see that happen, get out of town. But one of the last things he told them is, but as the days of Noah were. Now that's an important phrase. He didn't say as some of the days or you know the day of the flood he said as the days which means the days before the flood Mm -hmm. which would be the months and years that what was it like during the time of noah so will also the coming of the son of man be and that's important for us to see that tonight right because he says in verse 38 matthew 24 38 and 39 for as In the days before the flood, there he says it, right there, as in the days before the flood, they, now we're going to find out who they were in this teaching, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. In verse 39, this is a very peculiar passage of scripture, and we're going to find out another thing, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Why didn't they know? Why didn't they know there was a flood coming? When we hear a lot of these people today that say, did you know old Noah, he preached for 120 years trying to warn them? Well, you're going to find out that's not what the Bible teaches. Okay? Mm-hmm. So let's go back to uh, verse 37, Matthew 24, 37, but this is our key passage. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So in this study, we want to accomplish 
Our goal is to understand what those days were like. So how do we know if we are living in the days of Noah or not now? Now I believe most of you, if you've been studying your Bible for any length of time, you would agree we are living in the days of Noah and Lot, okay? Now to determine this, we must look at the days of Noah. We have to look at what was going on in Noah's day and compare the events of his time to the events of our day today. And that's what we're going to do. So in doing so, to determine if we are living in the days of Noah, we're going to answer five questions during this series of Bible studies. Number one, we need to understand what was the condition of the world in the days before the flood. Mm -hmm. Now, number two is we need to know how did the world get in its terrible condition. And we're going to talk about that terrible condition tonight. We'll deal with this question next week. But how did the world get in that terrible condition in the days before the flood? Number three, we need to identify who the people were who were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage before the flood. There will be those who will say to you, well, they were just plain old sinners. And I'll tell you tonight, yeah, they were sinners, but they weren't plain old people. You'll find out there was something very peculiar about these people that we need to understand. Right. The fourth question is, we need to discover why was only Noah and his family allowed on the ark by God and no one else? The Bible clearly teaches that only Noah was allowed on the ark. And yet we have some who teach that Noah preached and preached and preached and was <laughs> begging people to get on the ark. And that's not what the Bible teaches. Mm -mm. Right? No, no, it doesn't no, teach no. It. no. And number five, we need to determine why did the people not know the flood was coming if Noah was building an ark on dry land and he was warning of the coming judgment? Well, as we're going to find out, he really wasn't warning. And why didn't the people at least get a hint? Because the Bible says they knew that the flood wasn't coming. They didn't know. So let's look at this again, Matthew 24, 37, before we get into tonight's teaching. But as the days of Noah were, very important, but as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So tonight we're going to look at the first question, and we're going to try to answer that. What was the condition of the world in the days before the flood? To understand the days of Noah, we must go back to the time of Noah. We need to read and understand several verses in the book of Genesis. So first we're going to turn to Genesis chapter 6. Now, we're asking that if you're following along, turn in your Bibles to Genesis 6. And we're going to look at verses 5 and through 7. And then we're going to look at Genesis 6, verses 11 through 13. So let's take a look at Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 first. Now, the Lord God is literally looking down upon the world, and this is what he says. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. Now this is very peculiar because mm. the, God is literally saying that only the intent of his heart was wicked. Now we know that there are people today that unsaved individuals that are mm -hmm. wicked people, right? Mm. But yet I can guarantee you that some of these unsaved people, they don't constantly think of wickedness. All right? Some unsaved people do some good acts. Would you say that? Yeah. They, you know, they give to charity and, you know, and, and uh, you know, they, they're kind to people. I know, I know some people that yeah. are not Christians that they're, they're the best neighbors in the world. You know, you know they, they would help you. They'd, they'd borrow you anything. Uh, not a Christian, but, you know, I don't see them as thinking wicked. The intent of their heart is wickedness or evil continually. But... God says the people at this time, their heart was only evil continually. Do you see that, Ken? Yeah. And, you know, Pastor, this is what I like to call it is an infestation. I know that it begins with the heart or the, it begins with a thought. Mm -hmm. And people act, were acting on what they were continually thinking of. That's where the evil really begins at the mind. Yeah. And that's I where there are evil that. constantly thinking of it. And it just got worse and worse and worse. Okay. It was metastasized. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's a big word. Yeah. Right. 
Well, let's go on then. Genesis 6, 6. And the Lord was, can you believe this? The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. Now, I know the King James Version says, did it say God re repented? Yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't mean God sinned and had no. to repent. It just means he... He changed, it's a change of mind. Yeah. It, it, it's not, he didn't, he's, God is immutable. He, right. He, he doesn't He's change. unchangeable. Right. But he, he can cha change his uh, position in, re in, re in regard to a changed man. But he was mean. sorry? No, Some, no, th th Something no. very bad is happening here. Yeah, the, right. That God would be sorry that he yeah. created man. Exactly. I mean, you yeah. think about it. Have you ever been so sorry that, you, you are, why did I do well, this? He grieved. Yeah. He grieved. Yeah, but I mean, have you ever yeah. had, did something that yeah. you thought was going to turn out really well and... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it didn't, and you just yeah, find yourself yeah. literally, yeah, like almost like God here. You say, "Why did I do that? Why did I yeah. create?" You know what that tells me, Ken? There, you know. Once again, we go back to this Noah. You know, he was building the ark, and there had to be, you know, some righteous people on the earth. Yeah. If that was so, I don't think God would have said, "I'm sorry that I created man on the earth." Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Remember when yeah. uh, God was dealing with uh, 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 Abraham with about Lot? Remember Abraham right. said yeah. with Lot, if my nephew oh, lives in Sodom. Sodom, right. If there were 50 people, righteous people, will you destroy it for the sake of 50? No, I will not destroy the sake of 50. God and said, I wouldn't destroy it. goes all the way it. down to 10. And there was no, not even 10 righteous people in Sodom. And you know what? Yeah. I think it would have got down. There wouldn't be hardly anybody there. Yeah. Is it possible yeah. for there to be almost 100% of wickedness on the earth? Yeah. Well, I think it's what we're seeing here. And the only people that escaped uh, Sodom was Lot and his two daughters and the wife, but she turned back and became because a pillar of salt. Because yeah. her heart was in Sodom. Yeah. In Sodom, yeah. And so, um, friends, are we seeing something tonight? Yeah. The world was very wicked, and, you know, and it grieved God that it became like that because that yeah. was not his intentions, obviously. And yet the world had turned away from him and there was something else going on that we'll learn next week concerning fallen angels. But God was grieved. In verse 7 it says, So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from this face of the earth. I'm going to destroy all the men except as we, as we will learn it was Noah and his wife and his sons and their wives. Both man and beast, creeping things, and the birds of the air, for I'm sorry I have made them. And there we go again. God uh, mm -hmm. saying, I'm sorry again. How grieved was he? And you think about there's something going on that God would be that grieved. Now, Ken, you get a better picture of this. Yeah. Would you read Genesis 6, 11 through 13? And but following? Pastor, may I come in on that verse 7 real yeah, quick? Yeah, you may bet. I, may the, I? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Verse, verse seven. seven? Yeah, verse seven. Yes, There's sir. something here I'm seeing here. But you know, uh, he, the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I ever created, created from the face of the earth. If God hadn't have done what he did, man would destroy himself. And it would, it would have been much longer had he not done it. Because you, you can actually see God's grace or mercy by what he did. He had to do this because if he didn't, he'd be unjust. Yeah, well, that's the thing. God would have been unjust if he didn't punish wickedness. He had to. Yeah, but how do you explain that today? I mean, even some Christians, yeah, unsaved people, they're not going to understand that. No. They're not going to understand God's, you know, he's a just God, and he punishes wickedness. Right. But there are people that claim to be Christians today say, God would never punish. You know, I've even heard some people say they don't believe in hell uh -huh. because God would never send anybody to a place like hell. I've heard some say even God, I don't believe Jesus suffered on the cross because God would never allow his son to suffer. We have a society today that believes that everything should be about feel good and whatever I want, desire. And, but God must punish sin. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. A lot of people don't even understand what sin is. Sin is, sin is not just us dis, you know, disobeying. Mm-mm. It, it, sin is outright rebellion against God. Sin is so bad that the only person that could pay the price for our sin is the Lord, his, God, God's own Son. And, his only, and, and, and the shedding of His blood. Without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. And that's why Jesus had to come, because to pay the price for sin. He came for sinners. Okay. 
But you know how many times do we, do we have someone refer to what Paul said? What is sin? Sin is what? Falling short of the glory of God? Yeah, yeah. But they don't understand what that means. It literally no. means rebellion against exactly. God. Exactly. And we continually fall short of the glory, brother. Yeah. Falling short is one thing. Yeah. But rebelling against God is another. Exactly. And yeah. this is what we see here in Genesis 6. We see an outright rebellion, thumbing your nose and spitting in the face of the Almighty. Would you yeah, agree? I agree. Okay. So let's go a little further and let's look at Genesis chapter 6, 11 through 13. And let's see how the Lord characterized the days of Noah. And this is very interesting. There are several words and phrases here that you need to pay attention to. We're going to come back and look at some of these words in the Hebrew and understand their meaning. Mm. All right, are you ready? Genesis 6, 11. Okay. And the earth was also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Filled with violence. Mm. My goodness. And, and I think, God, go ahead. I, I think when you look at that word, filled with violence, then... Boy. I can see that is happening today. It's filled with violence. Can, those I mean, three look, words, at, look at what's going on yeah. in the streets in America. Yeah, exactly. What's going on in the streets up there in New York. You know, the people getting on the subway and getting mugged. The cameras catch yeah. these people getting beaten to a pulp. Yeah. And they do nothing. Nothing about it. Nothing. For no reason. This, you know, it's one thing if, if, you know, if you're trying to defend yourself in violence takes place but it's another I was watching this guy and it was on uh, the news playing his guitar he is just playing his guitar at some exit there at the at the uh, subway and had his guitar case open and people were putting money in and along comes a guy and walks up behind him with a baseball bat and wham hits him right in the back of the head and knocks yeah. him senseless how many of you got to see that anybody yeah. saw that one yeah yeah you saw it I saw that and how horrible is that you know, just for no reason other than the guy who's playing his guitar, you yeah. know. So, yeah, go ahead. But, but, you know, Pastor, what you were just describing begins in the thought process. They're, th they're uh, think thoughts of evil of all the time, continually, like we're seeing today. Yeah, yeah, and that's something that <laughs> I hope we see tonight. Exactly. Because, uh, you know, we are literally seeing a time. Uh, have, have, has the world changed any in the last 30, 40 years? I've been around oh, 65 yeah. years, yeah. and since I became, you know, a, a Christian in 1977, that's when I really started thinking halfway straight. Uh, you know, I, I can see that things have tra changed for the worst ever since then. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I don't remember a no. time period that things got better for a while. It just seems like mm -hmm. it's just got deeper and deeper in yeah. sin and wickedness mm -hmm. and you know, you just go back and look at television is a good example. Yeah. I found, and I told uh, you the story, yeah. I found an old um, TV guide from back when I was in grade school, you know, and looked at the TV shows that were on. How many remember TV guides? Because oh, yeah. we got three stations, yeah. that's it. And they were ABC, NBC, and CBS. And uh, so, yeah, you know, and so you bought a, D a TV guide. My parents actually subscribed to it because that's the only way we could tell what was coming on. And we, my brother and I would always look and see what movies were coming on. And, you know, especially on Saturday, you know, if there was any good afternoon movies. And all the movies, shows back then were halfway decent. I don't think there was any shows yeah, that you would yeah. consider was, you know, was vulgar. Yeah. There was no sex. There may have been some violence, light violence, you know, yeah. like... You know, somebody yeah. got shot, but you never saw blood and guts. You just, no. They just, you know, fall over. But, but look at the movies today. People will not watch. The older people will. Now, you may watch TV shows like I watch the Me TV and watch the old movies, you know, like yeah. Humphrey Bogart and John yeah. Wayne and Jimmy Stewart. Yeah. Tell the young generation to watch that. <laughs> no, they're not going to. No. They have to have the bl blood and guts and the sex. And if it, or even worse, many of these movies are occultic, demonic in nature mm. that they're watching. What is going on? Would you say a corruption process is going on? Because it's, this is what it, we're talking about. It's, yeah. A corrupted it's world. It's getting more and more, like I said earlier, metastasizing. It's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's, it's, it's leavening or leavened, you know. And so, uh, but you know, Pastor, what we, what we consider... Uh, what we watch is entertainment. Today is not an entertainment. No. <laughs> well, it is to them, but it, you know, yeah. it, it, that, that, it's the entertainment yeah. that literally yeah. feeds the sinful desires yeah. of the flesh. 
Yeah. You know, w- watching good acting or yeah. good mu- listening to good music, yeah, you know, hey, nothing well, wrong with that. Yeah. But this is not good. Yeah. This is evil. Exactly. And you, you look at verse 12. Look what God says here, Ken. This is, this te- this is a telltale sign right here. When he looked upon the earth, he's actually looking at everybody at once. That's what that means. Yeah. And, you know, Pastor, that word looked, it means, uh, I read this, something about that word looked. And it's, it's like God looked, bowed himself over to look and see, to look intently what was mankind was doing. He, he was doing a close examination to he see was, if they had a heart for God. He was looking at every heart. Exactly. Yep. He, he was intentionally looking. And, he, and I guarantee you, he's still doing it today. Of course, God certainly does. That's why he's, I yeah. guarantee you that God's yeah. looking because there's going to come a day yeah. because of lawlessness is ba- abounding, Ken. Remember, we, we talked yeah. about this. Exactly. That the rapture has to take place. Did someone ask me, how, how, why is the rapture going to take place? Because there comes a time when no one's going to get saved again in this dispensation. Yeah. Because the dispensation of grace is about to end. Therefore, then God's going to deal with Israel, and God's going to deal with Israel during the tribulation period. You know, Pastor, um, you know, that puts a, and I mentioned this to you this afternoon before meeting today, but earlier today, this afternoon, that puts a weighty responsibility on us because he's looking intently right now at us, what we're doing right here tonight. God's looking at that, and he's judging it whether it's, as it meets his approval or not. And I believe what we're doing meets his approval. Well, I tell you one thing. What well, we're we better take it serious. We got to take we're it We're going to be judged a lot more severely than it's, those it's who do not a, teach God. That's what I mean. It's a weighty responsibility, brother. We, we have, have a to, it's, very it's, it's, huge responsibility. It, like you said, we have more responsibility than like more than the president. What we have to do, yeah. Ken, and anybody that teaches or ministers in the Lord's Word must teach yeah. expository. He must take a scripture and expose it. These guys that just take a scripture and bounce all over. Uh, we yeah, and we yeah. got to teach you know, right from God's word. But anyway, getting back to verse 12, God looked upon the earth. And this is where we got our title tonight. And behold, it was corrupt. Didn't say it was kind of corrupt or, you know, a little corrupt or kind of becoming corrupt. It means it's reached its full corruption. Mm. That's yeah. what that means, right, yeah. Ken? Yeah, through and through. Yeah. Because the next part clearly tells us that. Yeah. You want to read that? For Oh, yeah. For all flesh, all, not some flesh, all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Now, if you have an... That's uh, entirety. Entirety? But if you have a New King James Version, the word his is their, yeah. their way, but mm-hmm. it just means all men. Mm-hmm. You know, flesh there is not, it's talking about mankind. All mm-hmm. mankind, can corrupted their way on the earth. Exactly. Do you know what that means? It means that it just got worse and worse. This generation before corrupted the generation, and, and then that generation took it a little bit further, and that generation took it a little bit further. Now, and okay, for, now just bring it up to yeah, our today's yeah. time. Uh-huh. Exactly. Have we seen that happening? Yeah. Our generation, of our older people here, you find it offensive, some of the things that are going on. But not today's young people. Not very many. And you know, go ahead, Pastor. I'm, d- sorry. D- I'm just saying the corruption process is continually, it gets exactly. worse and worse. Exactly. And you know, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3 13, evil men and imposters wax will worse wax and worse, worse and worse, right. deceiving and being deceived. Exactly. Is that not happening? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And you know, Pastor, uh, uh, I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> uh, well, we're talking about the corruption process. The corruption process. It just gets worse and worse. And, uh, there, this, this, the, and so there's no remedy other than what's going, we're going to be discussing later on. Yeah, the on, well, if, if the only remedy is if, if God will grant them repentance. Yeah. But see, Ken, as we're going to learn tonight and at, at the end, which we're going to show a, a video that I know every one of you that are truly saved, if you hope you are, and... You're going to find it very offensive. You're going to say, how in the world can anybody be like this? But we've reached that stage in this in society where corruption is reaching its pinnacle. And if people don't repent, they're going to go deeper. You think it's bad now? If God, the Lord allows time to go on another 10 years, 10 years from now, it's going to be worse. And if time goes on another 10 years, 20 years from now, it's going to be much worse. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, verse 13 here. 
And he says here, And God said Noah to unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, and for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Wow. He had no choice. Yeah. He had no choice. No choice. He had no choice. The Lord said, I will destroy them with the earth. So God is going to destroy the earth with a flood. He, you know, he investigated the situation. Like we said earlier, he bowed down and looked intently at what was going on. He, and he, he investigated it thoroughly. And he came to the conclusion it must be destroyed. And when it says, that for the earth is filled with violence, that didn't mean just people getting into fights and people are getting wounded. We're talking about there is many people being killed and even cannibalism. Yeah. Cannibalism was going on in this time. And we're going to bring some extra information to prove that. that Pastor, you know, because you have the Nephilim uh -huh. involved here and yeah. they were cannibalistic. Yeah. And you have blood sacrifices. So you had mm -hmm. ch children being sacrificed to pagan gods. And that's the kind of violence. It wasn't just violence between two adults or several adults. It was violence towards children. Yes. You know, Pastor, uh, would, you, would you agree that these people here would knew what they were doing and they were daring God to do something about it? I think they, they well... First of all, I don't think they knew who God is. It's not like they said, we know there's a God. I think they believed in a God, uh -huh. and that would have been Satan or a pagan God. Yeah. They were literally just defying God in any way, shape, or form, by, just like people do today. As you're going to see in the video later, they refer to God, but they defy him. Now, Ken, how does that happen? They, re they, they refer to a God, pray to a God, but yet defy him by going contrary to his word. What little word that they had, because that was a time of conscience, right? Mm -hmm. It was a period of conscience. What little they had in the conscience, you know, God gave them a conscience. Because yeah. they didn't have the written word then. So what the Lord put in their heart, there is a God. Find out who he is and worship him. That their conscience was completely, what we read in, in 1 Timothy, was completely cut off. It was, you know, as we read that it was like um, burnt, made numb, right? Uh -huh. The conscience is seared. Seared is a hard seared. iron with a hard iron. Like yeah. a hot iron. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, the reason I asked that question is because of a video we're going to be watching a little later, if we get to it, uh, it's, it's just like these people thumb their noses up at God and, and to defy him. Yeah, with that lifestyle. And well, that's, and that's the reason why, I look why at it I, defiance. Their, their defiance is there because they're literally doing what pleases self, and and this is why God has to destroy. Now we're we're going to look at these vital words and phrases in Genesis six eleven through thirteen, so you will understand that we're not talking about you know just God just sending a flood and wiping out people that had a chance to repent because they didn't. As you're going to discover, none of these people had a chance to repent because they reached the pinnacle of corruption that we know as lawlessness. And we're going to show you that. All here means all mankind is to be destroyed. God said all, the end of all flesh has come. That means all mankind had to be destroyed, which, as we will learn, goes against those who teach that Noah preached and, and, and you know, literally tried to beg people to get on the ark. No, that's not true. I mean, think about this. How many people do you think were on the earth during that time? Hundreds of millions. There's hundreds of millions. Yeah. Uh, I don't think the ark would have been big enough even if 10% of them would have got on. But God said all flesh would oh. be destroyed. Yeah. Flesh here is the Hebrew word basar, and yeah. it means mankind, men, women, and children. So we're not talking about the flesh of animals. Now, yeah. there was animals, obviously, that would be killed. Mm -hmm. The word corrupt is shakoth, and it means... The, they're, they're, they were corrupted means they were ruined and unredeemable. Now, that's very important. What would cause a human being to become unredeemable? That's very important to understand that. Because, it, you know, I always think about God doesn't want anybody to perish, all to come to everlasting life, but something's happened to these people that they become unredeemable. Well, uh, have you ever read about the Nephilim? What happened there? Anybody would know? Yeah. Well, maybe you'll get the picture. Anybody ever heard of the Nephilim? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so now we get a picture why the God says corrupt. All mankind is unredeemable, God's saying. I can't save anybody. 
But Noah and his family corrupted his or their way means there's a process of continual ruining of mankind over time. It got worse and worse and worse. And when the Lord said, I will destroy them, God himself will do the destroying because all corrupted and unredeemable mankind will be destroyed by the flood. And when you see the word end of, when God said the end of all flesh has come, mm -hmm. it means discontinued or ending of all of mankind in that time period. God is in his infinite wisdom has determined they need to be destroyed. Now God knows the hearts of all people, right? Okay. Yeah. Right. No, no, no was. And we'll talk about that. No, the Bible says we'll get to that. But everybody knows that God says Noah was a perfect man in all his generations. So, and so is his wife, and so is his son. So, the first question that we answer tonight and we're, we're, is that what was the condition of the world in the days before the flood? Well, God's word tells us that all of mankind had become corrupted. Mm -hmm. All of mankind had become corrupted. That means the minds and the hearts of men had become evil, and their thoughts and their actions were wicked and violent continually. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, Let's take it up to today now. In our very day today, let's answer these three questions. Mm -hmm. And we need to hear from you tonight. Do we see the same conditions that were in Noah's day in our world today? When I say that, point A, has the minds of the vast majority of people today been corrupted? Yes. Okay. I think most of you say probably say yes, but does anybody have an example? Anyone? There we go. Somebody said it. Transgenderism. Good example. Where was that 25, 30 years ago? And it hadn't been around forever. But now, all of a sudden, that becomes a big thing. Marriage is legal. You can marry a, a, a beast if you want. <laughs> 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 Marriage laws have changed, yeah. We have uh, uh, people marrying AI, people marrying a tree, and, you know, and, you know, of course, they've got homosexual marriage. Yeah, see, you see how. When a mind is corrupted or ruined, ruined here in God's eyes mean you're no longer thinking along God's terms, you're thinking along evil, wicked terms, okay? Let's look at point B. Are the minds and hearts of people today increasingly becoming evil? Yeah. Well, of course, if their minds are being corrupted, their actions are going to be evil. Yeah. And we see that happening in our world, folks. We just talked about it, how someone can walk up in front of some, behind somebody and bat him over the head. Or, or, you know, we've all seen the, the looting that was going on, these stores. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but it's getting very discouraging. You walk into a store and something that used to cost $2 now costs $10. Mm -hmm. A lot of that is not just inflation. A lot of that is they're trying to make up for the losses of people stealing. I go to this Dollar General here in uh, Marion Oaks. Mm -hmm. And I know the, some of the people there, and I, I liked it because I had a self-checkout. I always like to just get a few things for Teresa and myself and check out and go, though. They closed it down. I said, why are you closing it down? They said, because people are stealing all of the time. They will ring up one thing and put about four or five things in the bag as they're ringing it up. And, and they didn't know there was can They got caught. And they're just constantly stealing, so they had to close it down. But... This happens all of the time. And how many times did we see in the videos of people going in and taking big screen TVs and just loading their carts with, with all kinds of merchandise and going right out the door? Uh, yeah. Where does that come from? You imagine what would happen if we did lose our police force? I mean, what little protection we have in our law enforcement. When they announced a few years ago they were going to defund the police, I thought that has got to be the dumbest thing oh, this president yeah. and his administration has ever thought of. I mean, oh. he's got a lot of dumb things, but when you take funding away from the police force, you're literally asking, you're, you're committing self-suicide. You know, think about that. There are people out there that as soon kill you than look at you, and if you don't have the police force to protect you. And, and, you know, we here in America, we can carry, you know, we can get our can permit to carry or have firearms. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of countries you can't even have a firearm. Mm -hmm. Imagine what it's like for them. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. And finally, point C, do we see the thoughts and actions of people today growing wicked and violent continually? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, not, just, not the thoughts. 
people. Uh, the other day I seen a video, someone, I don't know, something happened, someone said something, and three or four people jumped out and ran right up and caught on video, because everybody's videotaping today, them screaming and yelling at this poor person that they had her b backed up against the wall, and just yeah. like ready to attack, just like, hmm. And this yeah. happens a lot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not too long ago, I was out, the, out of here at the um, interstate at the pilot station getting fuel. And there was a few people got out of the car heated, and I thought there was going to be gunshots firing because they were literally threatening each other. And, you know, that's how they start killing or road rage or something like that. But it happens all the time, more than ever before. I've never seen it like it is today. Would you all agree? Yeah. Okay. All right. So... Consider the age we live in. There has been an alarming increase in global violence just in the past 100 years. Wars in the past 90 years have killed more people than all the wars previous for the past 500 combined years. An estimated 203 million people were killed by wars just in the 20th century. Can you imagine that? An estimated 360 million people were killed by governments in the 20th century. Governments killing their own people. Can you imagine that? Now, think about today. Just in the last decade, war has claimed the lives of an estimated 2 million children and has disabled another 4 to 5 million children. That's in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. A silent form of violence is perpetrated around the world by deliberate actions, uh, deliberate abortions of innocence, and each year about 44 million abortions are performed globally. Well, that was since 2008. It was more than that. And even though we have the Supreme Court voting down the, the abortion, did you happen to hear the president's speech, what he yeah. talked about mm -hmm. when he gave the State of the Union address, how he con completely condemned the Supreme Court's decision and, yeah. and called that the women are victims of this horrible law that they p put forth, calling, you know, as they always do, refer to the baby as a fetus. Yeah, yeah. And they don't call it abortion anymore. No. They call it what? Anybody want to tell me? What was the phrase they used? Anybody want to tell me? Reproduction, Reproduction what? Reproduction. Rights. Uh, Instead of saying, see, abortion still, it, it, it tells a, it, it gives a negative overtone because abort always means to do away with or stop something. Okay, so now this, it's, it's, we've got to call it reproductive rights. Uh, Satan's so good at getting his words in, right? Well, you know, they got another name for the illegal immigrants. They call them uh, undocumented now. <laughs> yeah. Said, well, of course, they're not going to use illegal because no, that's too negative. You no, know, he got, he it's, got it's black. It's too telling. Yeah, exactly. All right. yeah. Ken, turn to Matthew 15, verses 19, and the first part of verse 20. If you okay. Could. First part of verse 20. Not 20B, but 20A. All righty. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Um, verse 19. And, and what, what we want to look at it before you start, I, what you want to see, I want you to see what Jesus said. Okay. And then we're going to look at what the Apostle Paul said. All right, Matthew 15, go ahead. For out of the heart of, uh, heart of, excuse me, scratch it. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but okay. to eat with unwashed hands defile not a man. Okay. So the, the main thing is we want to look at, Jesus said, for out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts. Just what we were discussing early. Yeah, yeah. and that's what was going yeah. on in yeah. Noah's day. And yeah. what, when you have these evil thoughts, you're going to have murders, yeah. you're going to have adulteries and fornications, yeah. thefts, false witnesses, lying, blasphemies. Blasphemies are in there, Ken. Yeah, exactly. Because you know, one yeah. of the things that are, is going on today that is corrupt is the gospel's been corrupted. Yeah, exactly. Okay, there are churches yeah. today that are preaching false gospels and preaching false doctrines. But what you need to understand is Jesus said it's coming from the heart. So if the heart is corrupted, so will the actions, right? Uh -huh. think, that, think about that. Do, do we not see that men's heart today in the world have been corrupted and that this corruption has led to corrupt actions and also that this corruption has come into the church it has it has come into the church would you say it, it has? has it has well let's look at second timothy three and by the way when you get to second timothy three we're going to look at some passages in second timothy chapter three you have to understand that what paul is 
referring to is not the world only. He's referring to the church. Exactly. See, a lot of people read that and you, you agree, oh yeah, this is happening now. Mm. Paul's saying, no, no, it's not just what's happening in the world, it's happening in the so-called church. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Perilous means what? Very what? Very evil, very dangerous yeah. Okay, times. Just like the days of Noah. For men will be lovers of themselves. And right there, you, 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 can you see what lovers of yourselves do? It leads to what? A corrupt mind and a corrupt heart. When a person loves him or herself, they're going to do whatever pleases themselves. They're going to steal. They're going to lie. Yeah. They'll commit all kinds of sexual immorality. Now, you think about that. You have some guy who says he loves his wife but really doesn't. He loves himself. Is it he's going to have an affair? Yeah. You've got to love your spouse Right. More than you love yourself. Otherwise, you know, man's heart is desperately wicked, and who can understand it, right? Yeah, these people here, brother, they call themselves Christians. Well, yeah. They call themselves because a Christian. Because they, they have a form of godliness. Yeah. But denying the Holy Spirit power. Yeah, exactly. Lovers of money. All right? Do we see this today in our society? Yes, and boasters. Yeah. Do we have a lot of pride? Yeah. Oh, my Proud, goodness. Proud, blasphemers. There's that word blasphemers again. Yeah. Jesus said it. Blaspheming God. And you're going to yeah. end the video tonight. I want to warn you. You talk about blasphemy. Oh, my goodness. Disobedience to parents. Hmm. I thought it was, I was bad. <laughs> my kids today, you know, you show your age when you say that. You know that. Yes. Kids today. Unthankful, unholy. Amen. Now, that's important because... When you're unthankful, you're going to be unholy. Amen. And look what Paul says next. Unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good. Verse 4, traitors, headstrong, haughty. And this is the telltale sign. Lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. Wow. That describes the end time church. This describes today's end time church to the T. Yeah. That's it. The Laodicean church yeah. right here. It's leavened. It's, <laughs> verse 5 says they, have a form, they will have a form of godliness. Now that form yeah. means an outward appearance. It means they will say they're Christians. They'll advertise themselves as Christians. They'll dress nice and they'll go to church. They will even talk Christianese. Like say amen or hallelujah. And they'll know how to say the right things at the right time. But... This is the kicker. They deny its power. What power are we talking about here? There's only one power that every true born-again believer has. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit that indwells us, right? <laughs> yeah, Pastor, they're good at practicing churchianity, but not Christianity. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. going to church doesn't mean nothing. No, don't make you, don't get Just you. like we see in the video tonight, we're going to see. Yeah. Going to church and singing. Doesn't make and, you saved, brother. And, yeah. You know, and yeah. thinking you're doing something right. Uh, yeah. But if you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit indwelling you, leading yeah. and guiding you in all truth, yeah. you're, you're just as lost as an atheist. And Paul says, and from such people turn away. And the reason why is because they are contagious. If you get around them... <laughs> They could very easily pull you away from Christ. Uh -huh. This is why as, as believers in Christ, we must always fellowship with strong Bible-believing Christians. Amen. Those that you can trust that will help you and that will pray for you and that will encourage you and that they're there for you, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at what Jesus said about the days that we are living in in Luke 17, 28 through 30. And Ken, I'm going to have you go oh, ahead and read okay. that. Luke 17, 28 right. and 30. Okay. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But in the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus it shall be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Wow. Oh, my God. He, you know. he, he, he says yeah. just like the days of Noah and the days of Lot. His, his, the, the time period of the days of Lot. Now, Lot, uh, was, of course, you know, we think about Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. What was going on in those 
Twin Cities oh, would yeah. be like what's going on in the world today. Exactly. Right? Yeah. The days of Lot. Okay? And, uh, you know, only Lot and his two daughters escaped. His wife, the angels told him, listen, God's going to destroy this city. There is no, hardly any righteous there, just like in yeah. Noah's day. Yeah. And he said, when you leave the city, don't you dare look back. Mm -hmm. It was a warning from God. Those angels were telling them what God said to do. Uh -huh. But what happened to Lot's wife? Yeah. Why did she turn back? It's pretty much says she had her heart was still in the city. When you become a Christian, friend, and I'm talking about true born-again believer, you don't look back at the world. You leave the world behind. If you don't, you're not saved. I don't care how much you think you're saved. You're going to leave this world behind because the Bible says, and it's very clear in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, 16, 7, 17, 15, 16, 17, love not the world or anything in the world. Well, the love For of, all that's in the world, world is what? The lust, lust of the, the flesh, eyes, lust, lust of the flesh, the flesh and the, the pride, pride of life. life. Yeah. And, the, and this world it's is not of God, and this world is passing away. But he who does the will of God abides forever. He who does the will of God abides forever. Amen. So if you're loving the world, you're part of the world, you're going to yeah, pass yeah. away with the world. Exactly, yeah. Does everybody understand this tonight? Okay. So let's look at old Lot's day. Do we see the same conditions uh, in Lot's day in our world today? Has sexual immorality become a normal part of society today? Yes, it has. Now, I, I know and I realize and I, I have debated some of these progressive believers about homosexuality and they say oh we've always had sexual morality but not like it is today come on don't you dare i know okay i remember back when i was in high school if any uh teenager was got pregnant it was a you know you looked down upon it that was just the worst thing that ever happened yeah and I no one that. absolutely no one would confess they're homosexual right. because that was kind of thing that you know literally yeah. you would be beat up for my high school yeah you know you would be look you know you would be an outcast not anymore no. now they they look at that and they're, they're they're proud of it like point b is homosexuality a celebrated lifestyle and is it being promoted as a normal lifestyle to be explored and the answer to both these questions is yes it's not you know it's not just well there, there are some people that are, they say they're born that way they're not born that way they're making a choice to be that way, and uh, as we're going to learn, God gives them over to that. Because uh -huh. homosexuality many times is God's judgment. Exactly, brother. It's God's judgment exactly. upon someone. Uh -huh. All right. And this judgment di didn't come until after the righteous were out, until Noah and Lot were out. They couldn't do anything until the righteous were out, out, out of the, out, you know, safe where they could be protected from the, de the judgment. You had to get out from, yes, right. Absolutely, yes. So just think about the sexual morality we see today, and I could show you hundreds of pictures, but look at this from the gay pride parades. How many of you here remember having gay pride parades back in the 19, let's say 1990s? No. Not very many, was there? There weren't any back when I was in high school. But now they're happening every year, and they're in June. They're coming up again, and they're, and they're growing. It used to be maybe there was 10 or 15 cities now. Yeah. Almost every city now. It's called June. It's, isn't it called the Gay Pride Month or something yeah, like that? Yeah, Gay yeah. Pride Month. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and they, they have ripped off our rainbow, but they've added a color. But, um, they, you know, they, really, that rainbow doesn't belong to them. Okay? Uh, no. And you can see in this other picture, Pride and, you know, I have literally seen pastors as marching in these parades with them. Not, they're not homosexual, but they are for homosexuals. Mm -hmm. And this is probably the sickest thing that's happened in the last few years is the drag queens reading to the children. You talk about sick. Yeah. How in the world, and, and, and what gets me, what is going through the brains of these parents that take their little children to have a freak like this guy read to them from a book. I mean, you talk about freak. That is, this is pure wickedness. Mm -hmm. And yet, they don't look at it like that. Has the minds of people been corrupted in our day and time? Mm -hmm. You better believe it. 
Yeah. It has been corrupted. Can you see how homosexuality and transgenderism and sexual immoralities have been accepted and promoted as normal? See how, and you and I who are Christians that say, no, 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 God's word says he created male and female for marriage and that homosexuality is a sin. We are the ones that are wrong. We're the abnormal ones right now. You get that? All right. God's word says, go ahead. Pastor, something came to my mind when you just said something. You said they're saying we're wrong. We're, the, that we're the abnormal. Wrong. We're abnormal. Well, yeah, okay, think about it. Anybody have ever done a study in psychology? Anybody gone to college and said, okay, how long ago was it that homosexuality was listed as one of the what? Psychological disorders. DSM-3, right, and how long ago? Not that long ago, maybe 50 years ago. That wasn't that long ago. Now, it's changed. They don't no longer add that in there. Uh, transgenderism, someone who's born with male genitalia mm -hmm. or woman, born women, now want to have a sex change. That would have been considered a mental disorder not that long ago. Now it's accepted as being, oh, that's normal. Well, but know, if you and I say it's abnormal, we're the one that have the disorder well, that's as what, Christians. That's what came to my mind when you said that. Aren't they really saying, in essence, that God is wrong yeah. and man is right? You're exactly right. They're saying God is wrong. And they're, and they're thumbing their nose at God. Yeah. Because, once again, I, I, I'm going to warn you. When you watch this video, you're going to say, how on God's green earth can anyone claim to be a Christian and defy God like these people are. But God did tell us what happened. Mm -hmm. Look at Romans 1, 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Now, this is very important because when you read Romans chapter one, God clearly details that those who commit homosexuality have been given over to a reprobate mind. Oh, yes, yes. We're going to watch this video and I'm going to give you a warning. It is upsetting. Okay? If you are a born again believer and you are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, you'll feel like just screaming out, No, this isn't right. But we're talking about our world is corrupted just like in the days of Lot. So, with, and Noah, let's watch this video now. Methodist Church announced that it's splitting towards a more conservative and traditional outlook. This is a celebration of love for each and everybody. But instead of being united in this message, the United Methodist Church is now facing a divide. From the very beginning, the church has held that the practice of homosexuality is incompatible with the scriptures. And uh, this really has come to a head. About 230 of the 800 churches in the Holston Conference are expected to leave the United Methodist Church. They cover a lot of territory, though, from Chattanooga all the way into southwest Virginia, and they're leaving largely over one thing. God is cleaning the house, separating the wheat from the chaff, and exposing those who hide under cloaks to promote sinful behaviors. The Bible is very clear on the issue of homosexuality as a sin. There's not really much of a way to debate what scripture says on that. Cranford disagrees and says there are multiple theological views on the subject within Christianity. It is not a settled issue. We do not agree on how um, the scriptures are interpreted. You have different, different definitions throughout scripture of relationships and that's that's where some of the discrepancies lie but as well as our understanding of, of biological makeup and how people are created. The Bible is very clear on the subject of human sexuality. God created a biological male and biological female according to Genesis 1 verse 27. Theological debates do not negate what the Bible says on this subject. The time has come for those who want to be on the side of God and truth to decide where their allegiance lies. But those who willfully choose to embrace falsehood must be rejected because you can't mix truth with lies. But at First United Methodist Church in Uptown, they're trading conservative for overall acceptance. Yeah, we feel that people who are LGBTQI 
are folks that God has created. And for that reason, the senior pastor says they're sticking with UMC to continue the mission that's long been a part of their ministry. Grace and inclusion and the marginalized and we're actually committed to the roots of Methodism. Was Methodism based on the celebration of sin or the spread of biblical truth? What we are witnessing in the UMC is the great falling away the Apostle Paul warned about in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3. When you look at the state of many churches in the world, particularly in America, you can't help but liken most modern-day churches to the church of the Laodiceans mentioned in Revelation 3. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Revelation 3, verses 14 to 17. In case you are wondering why the United Methodist Church is slowly but steadily dying, here are a few examples of what the denomination has allowed in its church. Let's start with gay. Someone who's gay is attracted to people who are the same gender as them. God himself is no more tangible than the cacophony of invisible butterflies floating in new lovers' stomachs yearning to be set free from the bondage of past harm and the lacks of rightful mistrust. God himself is nothing. Loving creator, holy one, and diva of the world. This United Methodist Church is my home. It's my family. <laughs> it's hard to move past the idea of the cross as anything but a torturous death trap, a death thing. The commentary of the queer, uh, the queer Bible commentary uh, transposes the story of Christ, this, really every story in the Bible, but specifically this one was about the, the crucifixion, and it transposes that onto the story of the queer experience. It forces the reader to wonder whether the story of Christ can be seen through a lens of queerness, through a lens of drag even. She read a line to me as we sat and chatted. The secret is what makes people tremble. And people will tremble sensing the mystery of queer wholeness. While the same-sex relationship is one of the primary reasons why many people are leaving the United Methodist Church, some major doctrinal problems contribute to the mass exodus from the denomination. The deity of Jesus Christ is under severe assault. Christians believe that we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. But the UMC has opened the door to the possibility of salvation outside of Jesus Christ. Clearly, any church that promotes such heresy is the church of Satan. Jesus said in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that no one uh, comes to the Father except through him, and that there is salvation only in the name of Jesus. The United Methodist Church likes to call itself a big tent, so it would permit other, other beliefs about Jesus and would permit its pastors to proclaim um, you know, other viewpoints of Jesus that, that uh, he might not be the only way of salvation. The Bible is clear on this subject. We do not get to choose to alter the Word of God to fit our viewpoints or beliefs. Therefore, when we say that the mass exodus at the United Methodist Church is a huge victory for the body of Christ, we hope you now understand why. It does anyone no good to believe the false gospel because believing the false gospel will ultimately lead people to hell. For certain people have crept in unnoticed. They have titles, bishop, apostle. They've crept in unnoticed. How do you recognize them? Ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. They pervert the gospel and misrepresent Jesus. That's as simple as I can put it. 
and they must be contended with. They must be refuted. They must be exposed. Why? Because if you pervert the gospel and misrepresent Jesus, you undermine salvation. It does you no good to believe a false gospel. As Paul would say in Galatians, it's, that's no gospel at all. We must believe the true gospel, the pure gospel. And the only way that people are going to believe the pure gospel and the true gospel is if someone somewhere stands up and refutes the false one. Unfortunately, the United Methodist Church has aligned with Satan to attack the Bible and mock and ridicule our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The holy and queer one be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship. My name is Caroline Camp. I use she, they pronouns. We want to affirm everyone to be who they truly are, to step into the Holy One's fire that burns away all that says we are not good enough and refines us by the Pentecostal fire to be who exactly the great queer one calls us to be. We don't want to play the rest of the video because this student's mockery of our great God worsened as she progressed in her speech. We made a separate video addressing her blasphemy. There is a generation of young Christians who when they actually hear the gospel don't like the taste of it anymore. We need gospel clarity. For I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Do we really believe that the gospel is our greatest need? Do we really believe that it's the church's greatest need? Do we really believe that it is our nation's greatest need? Do we really believe that it is our world's greatest need? Do we really believe that? Or are we waiting for someone to ride in on a white horse who's not named Jesus? If we believe this, we will manifest that belief by preaching this gospel in which we have confidence. In our day, we've exchanged this biblical ideology, this biblical worldview for this liberation ideology. It divides the world into people who are sinners who need to be saved by works and people who are oppressed who need to be delivered. And because we've divided the world like this, we, we sort of change who Jesus is. And now we don't view Jesus as the savior of the world, but the representative of the oppressed peoples of the world. Because what oppressed peoples need is not the gospel, but they need a Jesus who looks like them. And so we're arguing over things like what color Jesus was. This is all about us not believing that Jesus is who the Bible says that he is. This is all about us not believing that we need what the Bible says we need. This is all about identity politics and trying to drag Jesus into identity politics. This is about being ashamed of the gospel. This is about not being indiscriminate with the gospel. This is about thinking that some people, because of their social location, yes, they're sinners, and maybe they do need repentance, and they do need the gospel, but other people, because of their social location, they are oppressed, and what oppressed people need is something other than the gospel, something more than the gospel. Please join us in our fight for the truth. Please share our videos, subscribe, like, and comment. We appreciate your help. It is safe to liken this denomination to the adulterous and idolatrous Babylon. Okay, we're going to cut it off there. As you saw in the video, it was a little disturbing. When uh, you have someone getting up and calling God the great queer. Oh, man. And saying through the, 
the power of Pentecost, he, instead of saying, the, you know, the blood of Christ washes of all our sin, instead it, it, it allows those of us who have been, uh, you know, right. not included in years past, now included. Mm -hmm. And it, it just shows, friends, just how corrupt. When I saw the video, all I could think of is corrupted. Corrupted. The church has been corrupted. The, the United Methodist Church, when I was young, I never was a Methodist, but I knew some people who were, yeah, yeah. would have never put up with that. No. You know, and it's, it's in a Presbyterian church. It's in some Baptist churches now. Yeah. Baptists are going away. Yeah. Many churches are going woke. Yeah. yeah. You know, he said something that really struck me. He said, when the, when the true gospel is presented, they have no taste for it. They want, they want a gospel that says, I can have my yeah, sin. Yeah. I want what I want, yeah. and, and that I want to be able to say I have eternal life. Yeah. But they don't realize what sin is. Once again, they don't yeah. realize that homosexuality or any kind of sexual immorality is a rebellion against God. And let's call it for what it is. Right. It's not yeah, just, yeah. you know... Uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> deviant away a little bit. You know, we made some mistakes here and there. It is outright rebellion against God. Mm -hmm. So when I saw this, obviously America has been corrupted. The world's been corrupted. The church has been corrupted. We are definitely living in the days of Lot and Noah. If you can't see that, then you, you are as blind as blind can be. And God's word warned us this would happen if we give ourselves over to the lie. Let's turn in our Bibles to Romans chapter 1, verse 24 through 32 in our conclusion tonight, <clears throat> where Paul writes, Therefore God gave them up, verse 24, God gave them up to uncleanliness, or uncleanness, in the lust of their hearts. There we go to the heart again, as yeah. Ken read in Matthew chapter 15, verse right. 19. Uh -huh. In the lust of their heart, remember what happens to a heart that's not saved. They're going to think evil and they're going to do evil to dishonor their bodies among themselves. When God gives someone up to uncleanness, it's not God being mean. It's God knowing that that person is not going to get saved. He, he judicially delivers them. Yes, because he's already no, pronounced exactly, judgment. Exactly, yeah. And it's important to understand that because, you know, you read this with you didn't know what that really means. <clears throat> it's almost like God's making them that way if he's giving them over. But no, it's God saying, I know you're never going to turn to me. You're right. never going to receive my son, Jesus Christ. You're never going to repent of your sins. So therefore, I'm going to give you over to the uncleanness unclean of your hearts. Okay. Because verse 25 says, these people exchange the truth of God for the lie. Yeah. And that lie is, it's all about you. It's all about what I want. Mm. Okay, and that, is that not also being promoted in a lot of churches? Okay. When you tell what? someone that I'm, I am a homosexual and, you, and I was made like this, God made me like this, you just called God a liar. Because God doesn't make anyone like that. It's like saying, I am a murderer and God made me like a murderer. Now, of course, you can have those, those uh, temptations and you yeah. can even ha you know, have those yeah. thoughts in your heart. But to live like that and say, God made me like this, so I'm going to live like this, is exchanging the truth of God for the lie. It's a choice they made. Right. It is a choice because it's an evil choice. Exactly. Exchanging the ch my choice for God's choice. Exactly. God chooses me to repent and do uh -huh. what his word says. Oh, exactly. Because yeah. the next yeah. part says, and they worshiped and served the creature themselves rather than the creator. Yeah. I will worship me. What's Pride Month all about? We worship huh. our homosexuality. We worship our transgenderism. And pride does come before destruction. Thank you for reminding me of So they served, worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Yeah. There are, are masses of people tonight who refuse to believe they are depraved sinners. And this is, where they, this is why they are in the condition they're in. Because they refuse to believe God's word that says they're depraved sinners and that they need a savior, but they must repent. So therefore, they do not repent because they want to live to please themselves. Go back to 2 uh, Timothy 3. 
We live in perilous times for men were lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. Right, right so therefore they, they choose to uh, live sinful and wicked to please self. Now, verse 26, Romans 1, 26 says, For this reason, and this is very important, God gave them up to vile passions. There he goes again. He gave them up to uncleanness, now vile passions. And yeah. he tells us right here, God says, lesbianism, for even their women exchange the vile passions that they have. They have vile passions. They exchange the natural use for what is against nature. Wow. Verse 27 Whew. speaks of homosexuality. Oh. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing that what, what is shameful. Now, Ken, I just want you to tell me, is that I heard the one lady said they don't understand there's a different way to preach the gospel. Here, my Bible says, and I'm sure yours probably says the same thing, yeah. that homosexuality <laughs> is a sin. Yeah, mine does say that. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. please tell me how they can say that, no, there's, a, there's another way to proclaim the gospel, and it, it's inclusive. Yeah. Pastor, they want to interpret the Bible what they want it to say instead of what God's Word actually says. Exactly. And yeah. Remember, one of the, the, um, the, the sins of the heart is blasphemies. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Blasphemies. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what you're doing. Exactly. You're blaspheming a holy God, saying, I will determine. Yeah. It's, it's like you taking your Bible and just saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to get some scissors, and I'm going to start cutting some verses out. Yeah. And I'm going to get some post-it pads, and I'm going to write my own verse and slap it in there and say, God yeah. said it. We're, you know, we're to fit into his mold, not him fitting into our mold. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so. But the problem is they don't yeah. want to be forced into God's mold because they're going to have to give up their sin. Yeah. And look what it says next, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which <sighs> was due. Yeah. And friends, what does this mean? It means you have to understand that not all homosexuality is just the, 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 the perversion. It is literally a judgment. Yes, anyone can fall into that lifestyle. But I've also known few men who, and women who have gotten out of that lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. God's God. gloriously saved them. They repented of that. Yeah. And they were saved. But there are others who would choose, no, I'm not leaving it. And they'll never come out of it because that is part of God's judgment. Homosexuality is not always the act of sin that leads to God's judgment, but it is God's judgment. Understand that. It is God's judgment, and that's why Paul says they received the penalty of their error, which was due. And, you know, they will not change. I remember back when I was in Bible college in the 1980s when AIDS first came. Um, you know, the news of AIDS, I should say, and HIV, and um, how horrible. You know, it's almost like uh, the... COVID virus, you know, that was going around, you know, we didn't know how many people were going to die, mm. but the famous actor, Rod H Rock Hudson. I remember that, yeah, back in 85, 1980s. I yeah, that. here's yeah. a guy, a good-looking guy, I mean, he could have had any yeah. woman on the face of the earth, but yeah. he wanted to hang around all the young, young men, but what he did, instead of repenting and saying, I, I know that my lifestyle is a, an abomination and the sight of God, what he did was he said, we got to find medication to correct this. It's, it's wrong for homosexual men to die. So we, instead of repenting, it, it, they want a fix. A cure. A cure. <laughs> and that's the problem. The only fix for this is Jesus. <laughs> exactly. But they, they're willing to continue in this lifestyle, and I yeah. have known a few people that had AIDS. Yeah. I met a, a, a young man, this was years ago, Talked to him for a while, and he was just looked like almost looked like a skeleton with skin stretched over him. And he was at his last stages of AIDS and was dying. And he said he had come down to get some things. And I I asked him if I could pray for him, and he said yes. And I prayed for him, and I asked him to receive Jesus Christ. And I don't know if he really did, but he he said he he got it from his partner, and his partner was also sick with AIDS. Mm -hmm. And I looked at what this man could have been if he would have not went that route, but think about that. And I know homosexuality is not the only way to get AIDS. Come on, I, I'm not that ignorant. But I'm just saying, to take that kind of a chance. So 
Let's look at verse 28. And this is the problem. We go back to the, it's a corrupted mind, a corrupted heart. Verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. That means that they literally want to push God aside. Anything to do with the truth of God's word. God gave them over to a debased mind, and there it is. Yeah, exactly. There it is. God says, you're not coming back. Once you have a debased mind, you're not coming back. To do those things which are not fitting. Mm. We see the same thing happening in the days of Noah. We saw the same things happening in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah in the days of Lot. We see it happening today, by and large. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whispers. Verse 30, backbiters, haters of God. They're not lovers of God, but they're lovers of pleasures, yeah. as Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 3. Violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. Is that happening today, inventors <laughs> of evil things? Oh, yeah. yeah. Disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. I mean, Paul covers the whole shebang here. Well, he sure does. When someone continues in this and never repents of it, it could be that God's given them over to a reprobate mind. But verse 32 is very important. Who knowing the righteous judgment of God, we started out with that in verse 18, for the wrath of God is poured out upon what? Against all unri unrighteousness. Exactly, yeah. Knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving death. But look at the last part. Not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Uh, in other words, we applaud the people that do stuff like that. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And there are people yeah. today that claim to be Christians that are approving of these lifestyles. Yeah. I heard someone the other day say, that they tried to witness to a person who claims to be a Christian and wanted them to come to church here. And they said, no, it won't come back to church here because they're a Democrat. <laughs> I, the, I'm not kidding you. The person that told me that is here tonight, but I'm not going to mention him. Okay, but yeah. can you imagine? Um, I got news for you. I'm, I have a trouble being a Republican. But if you yeah. don't know, fr friends, who is the party of homosexuality? Who's the party of women's rights to get an abortion? Right. Yeah. Their platform espouses that. You know? Yeah, their yeah. platform. But you have people today who say, it doesn't matter. I'm a Christian because I believe in Jesus, but yeah. my belief in Jesus has nothing to do with my political affiliation. <laughs> I'm sorry. Your relationship with Christ yeah. has everything to do exactly. with the choices you make. Yeah. And this is why we have corrupted people in the church. And uh, that's why uh, we are living in the days of Noah. We are in a corrupted world. Mm -hmm. So with that, we're done tonight. In just a few minutes, we're, we need to pray for maybe someone who is not saved tonight. In our next Bible study, we, <sighs> we will discover how the world got into the terrible condition in the days of Noah that God had to destroy it with a massive flood. But before we go any further, the most important thing that we can accomplish tonight is not the Bible study, but to give you the opportunity. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Mm -hmm. Because if you have not received Christ as your Savior, please do so tonight. Yeah. Maybe we're talking to someone who is watching tonight. And there's only one way you're going to be saved, and it's not by going to church, and it's not by being baptized, and it's not by joining a church or having a Bible study or trying to be a good person or being religious or going to Mass, any of those things. Yeah. The only way you can be saved is to know that you are a sinner, a depraved sinner at that. That means you can't save yourself. And to know the good news of the gospel that Jesus Christ God in the flesh suffered on the cross to pay the penalty for your sins and repent of your sins. Truly be sorry that you have sinned and rebelled against a thrice holy God and ask God to forgive you. Amen. And if you're truly sorry and you truly believe, God will save you. He will give, he'll grant you repentance. He will put his Holy Spirit in you. Mm. You will be made alive and he will lead and guide you in all truth from that day forth. It's important that you are saved. So if you have not done that,
please do so because your days are numbered. Hell is forever. So is heaven. It's your choice. Do you want Christ and eternal life? Or if you reject him, have eternal death. Ken, I'll give the last word to you before we pray, and then we'll take questions yeah. afterwards. You know, I was just thinking, you know, that when I made Christ my Savior, and that, uh, that was probably the greatest decision I ever made. Oh, it's, exactly. it's anybody. You know? Yeah. The greatest decision yeah. anyone can make. And, and I was going to say that, you know. No, so, you, uh, I don't care what you've done in this yeah. life. Yeah. That's the greatest decision. It, yeah. it, it's worth more than all the gold and silver and all the diamonds and precious jewels in the world. It, it's, you're absolutely right, Pastor. And yeah. uh, that's the greatest one you could make, you know, to live for Jesus each and every day. And it's an exciting life. I can tell you that right now. It's not boring. A lot of people say it. I used to minister and witness my brother before he got saved. And he said, I, that's a boring, I don't want to go to, I don't want to accept Christ. I'm just going to be boring. <laughs> it's going to be boring like going to church. Boring. All. I'm more excited now than ever. Yeah, I know. And I kept sharing the gospel with him. He finally accepted the gospel, and now he pastors a church. But, but, um, but you know, he, it's the most exciting life you could ever have. And I can attest to that. It's, it's just nothing like it. So, anyway, but uh, when you find Christ as you're making him your personal Lord and Savior, it's important, it's imperative that you find a good Bible preaching, teaching church that tr preaches the gospel. After you listen to what we said today, what we said tonight, yes, it's all the more important you find a good church. And there are not many, but I can tell you this church is a, is a remnant church, and we do preach the, teach the gospel. So uh, uh, that's the most important. And get you a good study Bible. Don't get some of these translations. That get be you a careful King, with the translations. Oh, yeah, be very careful. Get you a King James, which I prefer, or a New King James, either one. Yeah. But these living translations and all this stuff. you got to be stuff. careful with some of them because yeah, they've they're, taken they're not good. some verses out. They've yeah. changed the meaning. They're even now, uh, because of the wokeism, the progressiveness, right. they're making some Bibles homosexual yeah. friendly. Exactly. And changing words. The NIV is one of them. Be careful. Yeah, be very okay. careful. They, they, all right. Amen. Okay. All right, so thank you for being here. We're going to pray then. Uh, now stay with us for about 30 seconds or so, then we'll take questions and answers, okay? This is only for our, those who are watching live stream. You get the extras tonight, okay? All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you for getting yes. us through this first part of this very important Bible yes. study. thank you, Lord. Lord, help us to always be reminded that not only we're living in the days of Noah and the oh, days man. of Lot, because we can see the, the world that's corrupted, and that there are many, many, many wickedness, yes. uh, much wickedness in the world and it's sinfulness that's growing. But Lord, most of all, it tells us that you're coming very soon. Right. And that's the important. We want to be ready when you come. We want to be found faithful. We want to be looking to the author and the finisher of our faith yes. the moment we cross yes. the finish yes. line. And knowing that we have done those things that glorify and honor you. Praise God. So tonight, Lord, we thank you for instilling your word in us. Help us to grow by it. And help us to also promote it and, incur and, and preach it and teach it to others. So yes. that they may hear it as well. Yes. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's people said. Amen. 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 Right. Praise God. It's the blood. 